Now, let me take a moment to digress. The light bulb that I've created here is not very realistic looking. But there's actually a really good reason to do this. One of the big mistakes that new users to Second Life make is they'll try to make objects that look really, really real. So perhaps if you were building a light bulb, you would make a bulb-shaped part, and the bulb, of course, is not just sort of a sphere. It tapers at one end, and it has you know, uh, threads so that it screws in, and it has a filament, and it's really the filament that emits the light, and the filament has this very complicated structure. You could very easily end up with a light bulb that uses 15 or 16 different prims. This is generally not a good idea. It's actually very important to get in the habit of building with a low number of prims. So in this lamp that we're going to build, we're really only going to use four. The base, the stand, the light bulb, and the lampshade. The reason for this is that one p a piece of land in Second Life has a budget on the number of prims that it's allowed to use. All those prims have to live in a computer somewhere. And each computer that's, uh, that Linden Lab supplies only supports a certain number of prims. So for example, if I go to my World tab and go to About Land, we'll see some information about the piece of land that I'm on. First of all, we'll see that it's 250, uh, 2,560 square meters. And if we look under the Objects tab, we'll see that I'm only allowed 585 objects on this piece of land. So what that means is that the ratio of objects to square meters of land is about 1 to 4. Okay, we really don't have a lot to work with. If you make a 16 prim light bulb and you make a 60 prim lamp, You've just spent 10% of your budget only on your lamp. So typically what we're going to try to do in Second Life is make our objects as simple as possible. That means that anything that a, a player is not going to see, we're going to simplify. Anything that we can do with textures instead of using prims, we're going to try to do that way. In this case, we're building a low prim lamp. In the end, we're going to end up with a lamp that only has four or five prims. All right, so we're just about done creating our lamp. We're only going to do two more things. We need to make a lampshade. So let's go back to our Create dialog. And for our lampshade, we're going to use a cone. So select Cone, and I'll just click over here somewhere. Now, a couple things to notice about this. First of all, what we'd really like for our lampshade, if we look at this lamp, we'd really like it to be hollow and we'd really like it to be sort of truncated at the top. So what we're going to learn next is how to change some more of our object attributes in order to get those effects. Let's go back to the Object tab. Now under the Object tab we've already seen the position and size controls. The next thing that we're going to look at is some of the other options. The first option that we'll look at is the Hollow option. If you just go ahead and click on this you'll see that hollow is something that can be set between 0% and 95%. And what it does is it just hollows out the center of the prim. So now I have a hollow cone. So we're part of the way to getting our uh, lampshade. The second thing that we're going to look at is taper. This is actually the control that turns a cylinder into a cone. All a cone is is a cylinder that tapers. If we reduce the amount of taper, then you'll see that we're starting to open up a hole in the top. So let's go ahead and set this taper down to something, say, maybe 70%. That looks all right. You can set it to be whatever you wish. So now we have sort of a lampshade. And I'm going to move it into place. So again, I'm going to click on the green arrow. And then I'm going to use my ruler to snap it into place that direction. And then I'll make sure front to back it's right. Okay. And then I'll click on my blue arrow to bring the lampshade down until it just covers the light bulb, like so. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead and change the texture and color of my lampshade. In this case, I guess I already made one lamp that's red. I'm going to go ahead and maybe make one that's blue. So as always, I'm going to click on texture, blank out the texture so it doesn't look like plywood. And then I'm going to pick my color from my lampshade, maybe this blue. Now the thing that I don't like about this, notice how bright it is in there. Our lampshade is this very opaque thing, and now all of our light is sort of reflecting on the inside of the lampshade. And that's fairly realistic. What isn't realistic is we just don't see any light shining through the shade itself. It's illuminating the floor, but we just can't see the light bulb at all. That's not very realistic. So I'm actually going to take my lampshade, and I'm going to change it so that we can see through it just a tiny bit. And the way I'm going to do that is using the transparency setting on the texture tab. And it looks like maybe 10% transparency would be nice. Now we can sort of see through the shade. Maybe that's still too transparent. Make it maybe 6%. All I'm trying to do is to make it so that we get the feeling that we're sort of seeing the light bulb through the lamp. 